everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and I have had my iPhone and my Apple Watch now for a couple of days. I had a really good chance to play with both of them over the weekend and so I can give you guys my initial review. I will learn more as I go but I want to give you my initial reaction to both of these because it has been a steep learning curve for me, I'm not gonna lie. It has been a little bit overwhelming to get the technology down. I am coming from just having an iPhone 6. So the 6 was one of the last ones without the dual lens camera, so that's something different. I'm having to completely learn the portrait mode and all the different things that I can do with it. It's just like I've seen the tip of the iceberg at this point in time. So for one thing, I am coming from a six. I had a real button on my phone and this one has face ID. And so far I have loved having face ID. I feel like it is super quick. I think at first I was like having trouble positioning like where my face should be in regard to the phone, but now I have it down. And I really, really like not having the button. I feel like it's so much quicker to just scroll up whenever I want to scroll up and go back to something. And unlocking my phone is so much easier. I feel like with Touch ID, it was really hit or miss. Like I can get it done really quickly or I'm repressing my thumb like three times and having to type in my code. Sometimes it just was kind of buggy for me. So I really, really have loved Face ID. There's only been a couple of times that I've had to enter my password. There's only been a couple of times where it didn't recognize my face. Um, one of the times was First thing in the morning, I had one of my eyes closed and it didn't recognize my face. I was just kind of half asleep trying to look at my phone. And so um, you have to have both eyes open. <laughs> so that was totally a user error. Other than that, anytime it hasn't caught my face the first time, I've held the phone weird. So if I hold it right in front of me, it unlocks and it's super easy and fun to use. Like I said, I can't have one eye closed and get it to work. Um, but I found that basically Anytime I go to pick up my phone and swipe up, it's unlocked before I even think about it. And I loved that. Um, I really, I don't know, I struggled with the Touch ID sometimes. Um, sometimes it was really easy and fluid and then sometimes, like I said, it would just not work for me for whatever reason. Probably had to do with like something on my finger that made it not recognize it or something, I don't know. But this has been smooth and nearly flawless for me, which I have loved. I also talked to my best friend about this. She came from an iPhone 10, so just the plain 10. She upgraded to the 10s Max, the same one that I got. She said the face ID difference between the 10 and the 10s is just huge and she would have switched just for that. If nothing else had been different, she would have switched just for that because there was a little bit of a delay in the face ID with the 10 versus the 10s. She feels like it's super quick now. So she's really, really happy with the speed of it. And one of my biggest concerns was the face ID because I'm like, is it gonna be really weird for me to use? But so far it's just been flawless. And like I said, I just swipe up and my phone's unlocked. I don't have to worry about putting my finger a couple of different times to get it to work. I just have loved it. And so it's not an issue for me at all. I thought it was gonna be a lot bigger deal than it was. I had talked about getting a new phone in a couple of videos before posting my unboxing video. And I did think I was gonna get an 8 plus until they released the 10s, and then I was set. I knew I was gonna get the 10s because of the new camera features. I just love the new camera features with the bokeh. And I think it's beautiful. I have a lot of wannabe photographer feelings. I am a scrapbooker, so photos are really important to me. Capturing photos of my little girl are really important. And so when I saw the new upgrades to the new camera, I knew I wanted the 10S versus getting the 8 Plus because it did have a couple of extra things that I really wanted in the camera. And I feel like the camera is where my biggest learning curve is right now because I am not used to portrait mode at all. I have taken so many photos and a few of them have turned out just absolutely gorgeous, but a lot of them are just not that great. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, they're just not that great. I really don't know what I'm doing yet with the camera, so it's something I'm really having to experiment with and learn. I've watched other videos on like how to take better photos with the iPhone, and I do wanna start filming with my iPhone, especially like when I'm out vlogging, I don't wanna have to carry my camera. I'm filming right now with the Sony Alpha a5000 and so it's a bigger camera and I don't always want to carry it around with me. It would be so nice to just, you know, vlog on the go with this thing. As far as the speediness of the phone itself, I'm coming from a, a 6 so it's really fast for me. I feel like it's super fast and also with my 6, I feel like I could not get a whole day's use of my phone, especially on a day where like if I'm playing emoji blitz or text messaging a bunch, my battery would die somewhere during the day. I'd have to charge it at least once during the day. And with this one, I have only used half of the battery. And I've, you know, I've used this 
heavy duty for the last few days. So far I get like a full day out of half of a battery, which is awesome. That's one of the reasons I got the bigger one. Obviously I wanted the bigger screen, but I also wanted the bigger battery because Frankly, it's annoying to have to charge my phone in the middle of the day. Yes, I'm home most of the time. I can charge it in the car as well, but it's annoying. It's annoying to have to plug your phone in. And so I just love that I haven't had to do that thus far. And I have used this thing a lot. Over the weekend, I had this out taking photos. I left the screen on a lot of the time when I'm taking the photos you know, between taking photos so I don't have to unlock it and go to the camera again. And I left it open and I still did not have to charge it during the day. It still had plenty of battery life at the end of the day. I do charge my phone every night just to have it charged because I'm just kind of so used to it, but I probably could get two days use out of this phone. I'm not on it usually all the time. Like this weekend, I was really putting it through the tests, testing the photos, experimenting with it, getting it set up and everything. I feel like I really have put it to the test. And like today I had an appointment across Austin, so I was, driving with directions on the GPS for like 45 minutes. And usually that would really drain my battery. And I'll show you guys here, the battery is still really charged. Hopefully you guys can see that up there. I've still got most of my battery left, even though I was running the GPS and it was also playing music for me in the car. So far, the only bad things that I found with it is the screen is so much bigger, so it's a big adjustment. Like looking at this big honking screen is totally different than my teeny tiny little six screen. And so that's been an adjustment for me to just have like that much visual input. It's been a little overwhelming at times when I'm going to my phone and it's like, oh my goodness, it's humongous. It's like a piece of toast, it's humongous. And so that's been an adjustment. And that's something I'll get used to over time, obviously. I feel like I'm getting more used to it now that I've used it for a few days. Uh, the other thing that I'd say would be the negative is the camera and especially the portrait mode. It took me a hot minute to be able to figure out what to do with the portrait mode because if you take a photo and you don't have it just right, it'll just snap a regular photo. It won't be in the portrait mode. And that's another thing like changing the f-stop or the background blur, the bokeh part, uh, that can only be done in portrait mode. It does not happen on any old photo that you take. So you have to be in portrait mode. You have to actually take it to be a portrait mode photo. And that's something I didn't realize when I got the camera because I was snapping a bunch of photos and I thought I could go and edit them and have the F change and I couldn't. <laughs> so you definitely have to be in portrait mode for that. But other than that, other than it being user error and not really knowing what to do with the camera, I have loved it. And like I said, even with my experimenting, I have gotten some really good photos. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to the overhead camera and show you guys the photos and what I like, things I've noticed with it. Okay, I did want to also tell you guys, I did get a tripod and this is something I would link to. It was just a really cheap tripod off of Amazon. There's the little box that it came in. It was, like I said, dirt cheap. My phone can clip in. I'm gonna add a little bit of a filming clip in here. I did film a little bit. We went to the Austin Aquarium today, so I will insert a little footage from that using the back cam. And then I'm gonna film just a little bit using the front camera here. Okay, so let's talk about the phone a little bit. There's my little girl. I did take that picture with the portrait mode. So really the only things I wanna really talk about as far as this goes is the camera because there are a couple of little things to talk about with the photos. I don't have a whole lot on here really, but I will talk about photos for a second. Let's see. That was the little test clip I just filmed. I'll insert that in this video in a little bit, but I really have found the camera to be great. So I took these actually at the aquarium today. The thing is some of the photos will say portrait and some of them won't. So I think for these ones, I really did get portrait mode set up. So as far as like looking at the photos, I can get them really big and zoomed in. You can see every little teeny tiny detail, which I love about the big screen. All right, I'm gonna turn it back this way because I find it easier to edit them not turned like that. So there's that photo. And this is in portrait mode, like it says up there. I go under edit and it is super easy to, you know, make it super duper blurry or make the background perfectly crisp and you can see all the strangers in the background. It always puts it at 4.5. So scrolling it down, um, I noticed that it's really blurred out and nice. And I find that like around her is less blurry then the edges, the edges get much more blurry, which is more in line with a real camera. And my little girl has really curly hair. So sometimes the curls are a little bit blurry around the edges. Like I noticed this curl here, 
they're a little bit blurry, but overall, like the curls show up really nicely, even with the camera blurred to the max, which I found great, especially with her having curly hair. I don't want her hair to always look wonky when I'm trying this out. All right. So these are just ones that I snapped while we were eating. You know, I'm still playing around with the camera. So let's go out here. Like her hair on this side didn't seem to get as blurry, but like right here, her little curls got a little blurry, which is not a big deal. It's just something to note. You know, it might bug some people. It might not be a big deal for other people. I'm not going to save those changes. And I'll go and show you guys a couple of the good photos that I took. So let's see, there's some like her just playing in the dirt and I got the background really nice and blurry and I don't think I pushed it all the way down. So you can push it and make it even blurrier. And one thing I like is it definitely can tell the depth, like the foreground and under her is not as blurry as the back, like moving out further. So it does really capture the depth. The only thing is the edges aren't always perfect, especially with her having curly hair. All right, let's go back. And there was a couple of ones that I really wanted to point out. Like this one, this photo turned out so beautiful, but when I up the blur, the stick in her hand disappears. So like that's just a software fail. So you can see the stick if you go all the way down. There's the stick. You blur the photo and it blurs it right along with the background. So it looks like she's not holding anything. And then this stick is even getting blurry. So it's just kind of silly that sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it doesn't. And then there was one other one. Well, there were two other ones. So here's my husband. The background is awesome. I just, I had him stand there and he did not want to do this. <laughs> so I did that. His hair is pretty detailed, but the background is so blown out and blurry. And I can't wait to take some Texas blue bonnet photos as a family and get the really nice blurry background just using this camera. I think it's going to be awesome. Let's see. I ended up with some really cute ones of her in her Halloween costume too. So these ones turned out really nice. This is just inside with regular light. And that turned out really good too. And her costume and the background's blurred. I really like how they turned out. I have one of those as my lock screen. It got really good on the edges there. Let's see, there was one that I wanted to really talk about where it did have a little bit of a fail. So this picture ended up being a beautiful, beautiful picture. Let's see, of her. I love this photo, but it has one little tiny issue right there. That part's not blurry at all, so I'd have to go back in and manually blur that little section under her hair. Overall, it's not super noticeable. Like, her, the rest of her hair looks really good, and you know, that's a difficult auto detect right there, trying to detect all those curls. So I just had the problem with that one little section. But overall, that's a photo I could never take with a manual camera. I could never get that good of a shot. I am super happy that I can get the shot with this camera and that alone makes this camera totally worth it for me. It makes it worth it for the price. Like, yes, I could even buy a $1,200 really top of the line camera, but I would not know how to use it. <laughs> so I would not be able to get the effects like I did with this where I just snapped a photo and got this beautiful photo. And like I said, I can go in and blur that section so it doesn't look so obvious. Like now that I've seen it, I can't unsee that little section that's not blurred. But other than that, it's beautiful and I'll scrapbook this and I'm super happy. I got this one, you know, mainly for the camera because I am a scrapbooker. I definitely could not replicate that on my camera in manual mode. So I'm really happy with it so far. Like I said, it's got little problems like that, but overall I really love it. And I just wanted to show you guys, you know, what you can kind of expect out of it. For the most part, it does really good. Sometimes it doesn't. Front facing camera test, I don't exactly know where on the little notch thing to look, but I am filming on the camera. I am just using the front facing right now. I do have a way to set it up to where I can use the back facing camera to hopefully do some filming for you guys with this. I don't know, like I'm looking at myself now. Like I don't know how much is actually airbrushed on my face versus my alpha camera. I think that one does a really good job of airbrushing and making the background look nice. This one, I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to play with the settings, but I wanted to insert this for you guys. It does film really well, like the screen looks really nice. And so hopefully the playback will look nice as well. Wow, they 
because they're hungry. I will do like a 30 day update, maybe like a two week update if you guys are really interested. I'm really glad that you guys liked my unboxing video. I really just had no idea the response I would get on that video. So I would be happy to answer questions. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comment section down below for me. I would try my best to answer questions in my next Apple video. I just didn't realize that people would really want to know, especially more about the watch on a female. And I'm like you guys, I watched a ton of Apple videos. Even after I had pre-ordered, I had watched a ton of the videos and it's like the same people who just love everything Apple does or it's the same people who, um, I don't know, try to cause trouble or try to point out all the negative things about Apple. So there's like two sides of watching the videos and I want like a real life person, not a techie person, just telling me straight if they like it or don't like it, what they like, what they don't like. I don't really care about all the details in the chip and the nanometers, you know, the inside stuff, the techie stuff. I just want it to work and I want it to be pretty flawless and easy to use. And so I really want to give you guys my opinion on that. So be sure to leave questions down below if you want my opinions on things or want me to answer things. I'm not a techie person, so don't ask me the technical questions, but I could definitely give my best opinions on things that I like and don't like. So I hope you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.